Rice Jack and Wheat Jack. The bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Fish Patrol. <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz is trying to rescue Happy from a cavern on Neptune. As he hurries toward the cadet, a strange sound echoes in the cavern. Hap, what's that? Just one of Polidor's tricks. He's trying to scare us with sound. Corey, you're only a few yards from the cadet. And I am on another planet. But what? You'll never reach him. Commander, look out! The gate's closing! Happy! It's no use, Commander. You're both my prisoners. We'll be back in a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, The Cavern of Fear. <laughs> Who's there? Oh, smoke and rockets. It's a walking, talking totem pole. Yep, your totem pole. Me, wearing all three of my man from Mars totem heads. That one on top of the other. Space patroller with all these totem heads, you look about eight feet tall. And I could see you and you couldn't see me. That's magic for a vision. And every totem head has it. A special piece of vision place that lets you see out, but nobody see in. Say, gang, have you got any of these king totem heads yet? They're more than 12 inches high from head to shoulders. Your identity is a complete secret. And those neat colors, red and yellow, green and black, a weird face in front with fang teeth, flop ears, and a beak-like nose. Got a fantastic face in back, too. Put it on and <laughs> you're coming and going at the same time. Remember, with your totem head, you can see out, but nobody else can see in. That's magic for a vision. Man, oh, man, it's terrific. Get a lot of totem heads, and you can be a walking, talking totem pole. Like my pal here. It's easy to get him to. And send for yours today. For every man from Mars totem head you want, send a rice check or wheat check box top together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> Now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Cavern of Fear. Exactly seven minutes after the report of the robbery, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy were in Division A of the express office of the Terrace Police Force. That anyone could successfully carry off a robbery in Division A was incredible. For 15 years, Sam Grady had observed the formal security regulations as chief agent of Division A, observed them faithfully, but without the slightest suspicion that anyone would dare to violate them. Yet here is Sam Grady, his head still throbbing from an aching blow, face to face with the commander-in-chief of the Space Patrol, trying to explain a robbery that just couldn't happen. All right, Grady, let's move it once more. Everything was all right at your check-in time at 2200 hours. You came in here and opened the safe. That's right, Commander. I took the package of Zycon pistols out of the safe. All right. You had the package. You closed the safe. You checked the code book. I started out of this room to give the package to Lieutenant Briggs. As I got to the door, I, I heard this voice. A voice here in the room? Well, yes, it, it was a big, booming voice. What did the voice say, do you recall? Well, this doesn't make sense, but I thought it said, have you forgotten something? It was a thought that might have been in my own mind at the time. I'm very conscious of security regulations, you know, so, so I turned back. Did you see anyone? He's not then. As I walked back toward the safe, I was suddenly aware of a movement behind me. It seemed like there were two men in the room, and as I turned, one of them slugged me. That's all I remembered until I heard the officer in charge standing over me, shaking me. And by then, these men had disappeared with the Zycon crystal. Yes. Well, Commander, this voice booming, it sure sounds like Polidor to me. Polidor? He's behind several major robberies. But by some means, he's able to project his voice to direct members of his gang. Whatever this device is, it enables Polidor to see and hear as well as project his voice. Unless we grant Polidor magic power, this device has to be planted at the scene of crimes by human agents. I don't see how any device could be hidden in here, in Division A. And yet that voice, it was so full and powerful. 
I'll check behind these files, Commander. Maybe they're... I just been unhappy. Come here. Yes, sir? It's right on your shoulder, that white powder. Smoking rockets, and I just had this uniform oh, clean. Don't brush it off. Whatever it is, must have dropped in your phoenix since you came in this room. Grady, I want you to come along with us to headquarters for a brain of test. Well, sure, Commander. I'll do anything I can to cooperate. We'll get to the lab lab and have that powder in the uniform analyzed. Maybe it's a food to fill it on. Maybe not. We won't know until we grab it. I'll bait. Bait? I'll tell you about it later. Come on, let's get to headquarters. Far out in space, a private cruiser races away from the man-made planet of terror. Turning from the controls, the pilot tunes of space hold will rarely use frequency. Adjust the scrambler circuit and beam the signal into space. Vortex aboard cruiser S-713 calling Polidor. Vortex Polidor. Vortex calling Polidor. Blackguard crystals are aboard. Planches are still on Terra as you direct. Sir, express occurred for 19 by our I was due then, but was being questioned by Spencer Corey. Well, then, uh, Grady recovered all right? Yes. Corey is going to give him a brain of graft test. But don't worry. What about the detectoscope button? It's destroyed. Reduced to powder. <laughs> That'll leave Corey with another mystery on his hands. Yes. Uh, what you... You will proceed to Neptune as directed. Sure, Polidor. Hold the Zyke Ron for smoke at the cavern until I contact you. Hold it or out. In Commander Corey's central office at Space Patrol Headquarters, Buzz and Happy are examining the results of the brainograph test on Sam Grady, express agent of Division A. Well, one thing's sure. Grady wasn't in on the job. No, everything he told us was the truth. He wasn't even guilty of terrorism. Polidor's men had everything figured down to the last detail. Say, Commander, what about that powder on my jacket? The lab's still working on it, but I have a preliminary report. Powder is composed of several different elements, materials that might be used in electronics equipment. Mm, then Polidor must have had some gadget fastened to the ceiling, the gadget he, uh, he projects his voice from. Mm-hmm. Also, it apparently acts as a view scope and sound detector as well as a reproducer. Gee, it sure must be a compact device. Judging from the amount of powder, the whole thing couldn't have been much larger than a coin. Or some of the material may have been completely vapor what telling the jacket was just the ash. Yeah, but how was it destroyed? Possibly by a vibration. Before I heard me tell you to search the room, he may have transmitted a frequency that disintegrated the device. I'm not sure like to know who planted it then. Say, uh, back in Division A, you mentioned something about a trap for Polar How are you going to work it? Already in operation, Jeff, a group of businessmen are holding an important meeting in the green room at the Terra Hotel. Discussing a financial matter, I'm sure Polar will be very interested in. The shipment of a million credits to the Saturn Trust Company. The green room? But that's supposed to be spy proof. Exactly. Behind the walls, floor, and ceiling was an electronic jamming device that would garble any recording or secret ticket. Even this gadget of Polidor? I know. But if Polidor succeeded in planning his gadget in the green room, it would be working. If had the jamming device disconnected, Polidor will hear everything that goes on at the end. How can we be sure that he heard about the meeting? Well, the range were some carefully planted leaks. With Polidor's spy set up, he should have picked up our kind of information. Hmm. Million credit bait. I don't need Polidor into a trap, all right. Yeah, it's nearly 1,400 hours left. The meeting in the green room ought to be breaking up soon. When everyone leaves, we'll search the conference room. On the top floor of the luxurious Terra Hotel, Buzz and Happy wait unobtrusively at the end of the corridor as ten important business leaders pile out of the green room. As the group steps into an elevator, Buzz touches Happy's arm. It's there, Hat. Come on. Commander. I think that last man saw us. I'm pretty sure he recognized you. I know he did have That was Nelson Kettering, chairman of the meeting. He's the only man in that group who knows we're setting a trap for Polidor. Go on in here. Hey, this is some room. Look at the size of that conference table. I'll check this switch, and we'll search the room. Switch? Detective system was turned off during the meeting. Give Polidor an earful, then when Kettering left, he turned it on. Oh, I get it. So Polidor couldn't hear us or see us while we're searching the room. Yeah. We'll start a systematic search. We'll check every square inch of the walls and ceiling. It'd be pretty hard to conceal anything in this room. The walls are smooth and plain. Half. Look up at the ceiling. You see anything up there? Um, no, sir. Look close, right in the center, directly over the table. I still don't see. Oh, yeah. A small round thing. I can barely make it out. You put one of these chairs on the table, have you? You'd better closer look. Sure, sir. Here, I'll give you a boost. Yeah. Something like a large button. 
You want me to see if I can pry it loose? Yeah, I'd take this metal box. Electronically shielded like the conference room. If you get that button down, drop it in the box. Yes, sir. Now hold the box right under it so the gadget will remain in the strong shielding field. It's coming loose, Commander. I got it. Hand me the box, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to headquarters and have the lab analyze this thing. To get to headquarters, we'll have a checkmate on everybody here at the hotel who has access to the conference room. Yeah. Might give us a lead on who planted that gadget. Help! Help! Gentlemen, can you help me? What's the trouble? It's my partner. I was sent up here to help him clean one of the rooms. There he was, laying on the floor of the janitor's supply room. I'll pull. Come on, Happy. Must have dropped a bottle of cleaning solvent. The fumes got him. Here. Uh, right in here. See? There he is. Oh. No wonder he passed out. That stuff burns my lungs. I, I hope we're not too late. You hold the door open. Half let's drag him out in the corridor where he can get some fresh air. Yes, sir. I'll take his feet from him. I ask you to hold that door open. Get your hands up, both of you. Uh-oh, Commander. Isn't a ray gun rather odd equipment for a janitor to carry? I cut the chatter. Hand over what you took out of the contents room. It makes you think we took anything out of the room. I watched you go in and I watched you come out. Now hand over that box. Come on, or you'll get what that guy got. All right. Here you are. Just being smart, Craig. Now, don't try anything. I'm watching you. I'll take a look in this box. Well, you found it, huh? Thanks, Craig. You saved me a lot of trouble. You just put the detective scope button in that pocket. Wait, like it. Hold the button up. Pull it in. Yeah. Pouring into the desk. They found a button in the conference room, Polidor. Where are you now? In the janitor's supply room of the Terra Hotel. I took care of the real janitor with the ray gun and borrowed a spare uniform from his block. Gentlemen. Yes, Polidor. You're on the top floor of the Terra Hotel? Yeah. Good. I noticed a window in the rear of the room. Use the ray gun and pour into the desk. Then shove them out the window. A 30-story drop from in there. And you'll be out of my life for good. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. A spook from outer space. Or an Indian from a reservation on Mars. Or a mystery man from another solar system. Yes, sir, Space Patrol. You could be any one of those weird characters, but you're wearing a man from Mars totem head with <laughs> magic forehead vision. That's the special secret vision plate every totem head comes equipped with. So you can see out, but nobody else can see in or know who's wearing the man from Mars totem head. And to make sure your identity is a complete secret, it's more than 12 inches high. Colors that are out of this world. Red and yellow, green and black. Remember, you see out. Nobody sees in with magic forehead vision. Fantastic fun. You can have it with a man from Mars totem head. Get one. Get as many as you like and wear them all. Stack one on top of the other. For every totem head you want, send a rice check or wheat check box top. Together with your name and address and 25 cents in coins to... Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget the 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. Now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Cavern of Fear. Buzz and happy have been lured into a janitor's supply room on the top floor of the Terra Hotel by Blanchard, one of Polidor's confederates. Holding the space patrollers at gunpoint, Blanchard removed the detective scope button from a shielded box, enabling Polidor, in some remote and unknown place of security, to see and hear everything in the room. Polidor has ordered Blanchard to use the ray gun on Buzz and Happy, and then thrust their unconscious forms through the window, 30 floors above the street. All right, Corey. Yeah, but Polidor said, I think I'll take care of you first. You're making a mistake, Blanchard. Why should you run all the risks through Polidor's dirty work? Go on, Blanchard. He's just... 